So what I'm going to do at the top of the script here is add a few global variables that keep track of all the candlesticks uh, that we've processed and their open, high, low, and close data. And every time a new message comes in, we're going to process it and update the candlestick data appropriately. So I'm going to add a, a few things to keep track of which minutes we've processed. So I'm going to do uh, minutes process equals a, a new dictionary. And I'm just going to keep track of each minute that we've actually uh, processed. That way, if a key or a minute is not in this dictionary, we'll create a new minute record. Then I'll have a list of all of the minute candlesticks. So I'm going to do minute candlesticks. Uh, we might change this later to be five minute candlesticks or hour candlesticks. And this is just an empty list. So at the beginning, we have no candlesticks. We haven't processed any minute data. And then I'm going to keep track of what the current tick is. So I'll start that at none and I'll keep track of the previous tick so that I can compare it uh, to the current tick. And also, uh, I want to uh, store the previous tick as the close of the last candle if we start a new minute. So I'm gonna do previous tick equals none as well. So uh, these are the main things I have to keep track of. And then now I'm gonna add some code in uh, the on message function to update our candlestick data based on the prices that come in. So here I will do a global uh, current tick and previous tick to pull these into scope. Okay, so I have a reference to those variables. And at the very beginning when I receive a message, uh, the first message I'm gonna say previous tick equals current tick. And then when I receive a new message, I'm gonna do current tick equals json.loads message. So that'll be my message. So at this point, previous tick will have whatever current tick was previously. So the first tick, uh, previous tick is going to be none. And then current tick is going to become the very first tick that we get. So that's the very first price that we get. So we receive the message. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to print out what the, the tick that we received. So I'm going to print some debugging information. So I'm going to type uh, received tick. And then I'm also going to print out a formatted string of what the timestamp was and what the price was. So that's the string and I'll do dot format and I'll do current tick and the key is called time. So current tick time and then I'll do the current current tick price. And if I run that, you should see uh, it'll start printing out some of that debugging information to the terminal. Oops, I need to put a dot there, dot format. I'm going to run that. And you'll see it'll start printing the ticks. So 224, uh, 317, and 6 seconds, 7 seconds, 9 seconds. We keep getting different prices for Bitcoin. So it's currently trading at about 9,759. We have this real-time stream of the prices uh, coming in. And now we can just start building like minute candlesticks based on uh, this tick data. So what I'll do here is uh, create a new uh, date time object. So I, what I want to do is I don't care about these milliseconds and seconds. I really just care whenever this minute changes over. So I need to keep track of whenever uh, each minute candlestick creates a new high, a new low. And I also want to record the very first tick, tick when the minute changes because that's going to be the opening price. And then when the minute changes, I also want to store the closing price and associate it with the previous minute. And we're going to keep track of this in this list of candlesticks. Uh, so how do we do that? Um, so I need to, uh, this timestamp is in this format. What we want to do is load it as a date time object. That way it's very easy to process and figure out what the current minute is. And so what I'll do is uh, tick date time object equals date util. And I'm going to import dateutil.parser. So import dateutil.parser. And this is going to let me parse the state time format. dateutil.parser.parse. And I have the current ticks time, which is that format you see there. Then I'll create another variable to just store a shortened uh, string representation of our date and time. So I'm just going to call this uh, tick uh, dt equals. Uh, tick date time object dot string from time string f time and then we're going to use this format percent m so we'll do month day uh, year and then we'll just do hour and minute 
so hour colon percent minute. And I'll post the code here so you can uh, copy paste this if you want to later. And now I'm just going to print this tick DT um, just so we can see it, see if this is working so far. Okay, cool. So you see we have a shortened uh, timestamp here, so 320. Each of these ticks are for 320, which is good. And we can also print out what the current minute is. So we can use this tick date time object. And if we do uh, tick date time object dot minute, uh, we can see each minute. And you can see we have just the number 20 and we can use that to keep track of the minutes and see if the minute changes on a given tick. All right. So we're going to keep track of a list of unique minute candlesticks and I'll only add a new minute candlestick to the list if that minute, if we haven't encountered that minute yet in the uh, ticker data. So at the beginning, the minute candlestick data is empty. And so we're going to detect if there's a new minute. So I'm going to say if not tick date time, so tick DT, this string, for instance, 322 is not in our minutes process. If not tick DT in minutes processed, then we know we have a new minute, okay? So I can print starting new candlestick, and then I'll add that candlestick uh, to our dictionary. So I'll say uh, minutes processed tick DT equals true. So we'll just have this list of keys that grows. And then so if I print uh, minutes processed, You'll see we'll, we end up getting a growing list of minute candlesticks. So I'll do that. I'll run it again. And you'll see starting new candlestick. And now we're processing minute 323. But it's not going to add another minute candlestick until we get till 324. So not only are we going to add a new key to our dictionary to keep track of whether the candlestick is unique, we're also going to add the candlestick to our candlestick list. So we're going to do minute candlesticks dot append. So we're going to create a new candlestick that we add to our list. And each candlestick is going to be a dictionary and it's going to have open, high, low, and closed data, just like we did um, in our previous uh, backtrader examples. So we need that OHLC data. So I'm going to store a reference to the minute. So I'm going to do minute as a key and do a tick DT. And then I'm also going to do open and then I'm going to do high and I'll do low and I'll do close. So I'm, I can't add the close yet when the minute starts. So I'm just going to start with open, high, and low. And then we'll add the close next time we get to a new minute candlestick. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. So we're adding the uh, current minute. And then the open is going to start. The open is just the first tick. And this is a new minute here. So we can just add the open current tick uh, price. And the high on the first tick is current tick price as well. So basically everything starts out open, high, and low all start the same. So the first time we add the candlestick, open, high, and low are the same. And then we're going to adjust the high and low depending on if we encounter a higher or lower ticks later on. So this is how we start initializing our first candlestick. So after this if condition, uh, we can start keeping track of the high and low of uh, each candlestick in this list. So I'll do if length. So we'll check if there's a minute candlestick first. So if the length of minute candlesticks is greater than zero, because if it's empty, we don't want to process any of it. Um, I'm going to say current candlestick equals minute candlesticks negative one. And that's basically going to say the current candlestick is the last one in the list. And then I'll say if the current ticks price is greater than the current candlesticks high, then, then the current candlesticks high is going to be this new uh, current ticks price. So I'll say it current candlestick high equal to current tick price. So tick by tick keeps coming in for the current minute. If it gets a little bit higher, we update the high of the candlestick. And then likewise, if the current ticks price is less than the current candlesticks low, then we know the current candlesticks low uh, can be updated to equal the current ticks price. Right, so we keep checking for newer highs and newer lows while we're in that candlestick. The open price stays the same. The open is the open, and then at the very end, we need to check for the close. 
And so for debugging purposes here, I'm just going to print the candlesticks we have and what they look like. So I'll do print uh, candlesticks. And I'll do for candlestick in minute candlesticks, print candlestick. All right. So now I'm going to run this again. And you can see we're receiving tick data. The open starts at 9774, high 9774, low 9774. And then we've received more and more ticks. We have one candlestick so far in our list. Uh, it hasn't been updated yet because we haven't received any ticks that differed from 9774. But eventually we're going to get a bid that goes above that or below that. Um, and then you'll see these opens, highs, and lows start processing. Okay, there you saw one at 99 cents. So the low went down a little bit uh, to 9773, then back up to 9774. So it looks like our Bitcoin price is a little bit stagnant at the moment, but in a minute you'll see the prices. Oh, there you go. So it started changing uh, 9760.68. So you see our low went down. Bitcoin went down again to 9754. So the last candlestick here you see is updated. Uh, the first candlestick just stayed closed, uh, so nothing really happened in that candlestick. All right, you see it created a new candlestick there, and you see uh, this candlestick actually open at 9757, and then its high is 976751 uh, so far. And so you see we're, we're gradually building these minute-by-minute -minute candlesticks. Uh, we're recording whatever the open was, and then we're updating the highs and lows depending on the tick data that comes in. So what's next? So that seems to be working. So the last thing we need to do, you know, we need the OHLC data. We need to add our closing price. Well, uh, we kept track of the previous tick you can see up here. So we're going to use this previous tick and record it as the close whenever we uh, change candlesticks. So where do we add this code? So if the tick uh, is not in minutes process, we start a new minute. So if we started a new minute, that means we finished a previous minute. So what we want to do, uh, we're not going to have a close until we have another uh, candlestick process. So before uh, we append this candlestick, we're going to say if length of minute candlesticks is greater than zero, it's greater than zero, uh, then the minute candlesticks negative one close equals the previous ticks price. And you see what that does? Uh, once we have a candlestick, uh, we can look at the previous can the last candlestick. So negative one, the last candlestick's close. We can set the last candlestick's close equal to the previous tick's price. And then we get a brand new candlestick. We have our closing price recorded for the previous candlestick. And then we keep appending to the list. And so if we run that again, you'll see uh, we start getting closing candlestick data. So I'm going to let that run just so you see the minute cross over. So you see we're at the 38 second mark. We have one candlestick. Uh, so the seconds are going to keep adding. And then eventually you're going to see uh, this dictionary that represents the candlestick. Uh, it's going to get a closing price. And then we're going to start a new candlestick with an open high and low. All right. So 55 seconds here. Uh, we should get another tick soon. And you should see it. Uh, yep, carry over. So that's our second candlestick at the 33 minute mark. And you see the closing price went into the previous candlestick. We opened a new candlestick and now we're processing and updating highs and lows again. So we've accomplished a lot so far. We've connected to a real time data feed over WebSockets. We're able to process tick data for Bitcoin. We're able to aggregate that data and keep track of a list of candlesticks, including their open, high, low, and close prices. And so now what's left to do? All we have to do is figure out how to process this list, detect a pattern in this price data, and then we can execute trades based upon those price patterns. So in the next video, I'll show you how to do the pattern detection portion uh, on this particular data feed. And then finally, we'll hook that up to uh, an actual broker and place trades. And on that part, we're going to use Alpaca to place bracket orders after one of these patterns is triggered. So stay tuned for the next video and thanks a lot.